Hey guys, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy where the proof is in the singing. I am continuing taking these awesome isolated vocal tracks. Uh, I'm doing a vocal analysis, a tutorial, uh, talking about the writing process, the band, etc. Uh, and next up is Black Sabbath. The song is called Iron Man. And of course, we know the singer is Ozzy Osbourne. Now we know what came of Ozzy later, but this was his first big out of the box kind of thing. But I have a backstory I want to share with you in a second. But if you wouldn't mind first, please like and subscribe to my channel. That would be really cool. I have a singing course called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. You can find it right here at KenTampleOfVocalAcademy.com. <sighs> and I have a uh, singing forum over there that uh, has 25,000 members all talking about how to get great at singing. But back to Iron Man. So Iron Man for me was terrifying as a child. Let me explain. My older brother, Rich, who was six years older than me, and I think the album was released like around 1970. Check me out on this, because I remember I was seven. So I was born in 63, so seven, yeah, I was seven years old. And my parents would leave on Saturdays pretty early in the morning. They'd just go out and kind of leave us all day. And this is the 70s where you can do that. You get on your bike and come home when the street lights come on, and you know, you were okay back in the 70s for the most part except for the drugs, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> so I remember my older brother would do these things. Oh, sorry. And my dad had a fetish for always having the biggest and best, particularly in the area of entertainment, like entertainment centers, speakers, speakers, sound systems in his car, etc. So he bought something called the Voice of Theater 5000 or 9000 or something. It was, but anyway, there were these Mass, I mean, we're talking 1970. Imagine this. These massive speakers that were this high, this wide, this deep, with what were called Altec Lansing Voice of Theater 5000 speakers, which apparently were the same speaker systems uh, that was in Grauman's Chinese Theater in Hollywood. Okay, so imagine this. They're in these beautiful walnut cabinets. I mean, he really, you know, that was, he had a, a Marantz stereo, remember Marantz? And it was like, 10,000 watts. I, I am not exaggerating. So my dad, it was just his thing. Like, And we lived in a big three-story house in a place called Bellhurst. Um, anyway, so my brother, get back to my brother. So my brother, he would get up early on a Saturday morning. I'd be still sleeping. It'd be like 7 a.m. My parents are gone. And he would crank the crap out of this system. And this is what I heard at 7 a.m. before I woke up. <laughs> I was freaking terrified. You're seven years old. You're waking up to this stuff. This is the same brother, mind you, that would talk me into going to vampire movies when I was younger because my parents wouldn't let him go without like taking us or something. Wouldn't tell my parents. He'd tell them, oh, we're going to see Sherlock Holmes or we're going to go see. And I loved karate movies. So I'd go, you know, I'd love to go see. Um, yeah, whatever. Karate movies. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Bruce Lee. Sorry. And so, you know, so he would tell my parents to go see a Bruce Lee, but he didn't tell him that there was a vampire movie after. And it just, I, I'm not kidding. To this day, I think it might be why I have a sleeping problem <laughs> was because of some of the stuff my older brother did. But anyway, so so this is my first encounter. And, and, by, and, and, and the name of the band is Black Sabbath, right? And, you know, so it's on Saturday or Sunday, my brother's blasting this stuff. The album is called Paranoid, and the song is called Iron Man. Let me tell you what Iron Man's all about. So Iron Man is this guy who gets time travels, and he goes into the future, and he sees the great apocalypse, okay? And then he comes back in time into the present of his time and some magnetic field or something turns him into metal, a metal man, an iron man. And he's trying to warn the world of what's coming and they mock him and they make fun of him and this and that. And he gets, you know, his revenge finally is just, ah, I'll show them. And he winds up becoming and turning the apocalypse or, or literally creating the apocalypse that he saw in his future, he actually instigates. So all this is, I didn't know all of this at seven, but this is my experience with Iron Man. So anyway, so now let's take out the track and you know sort of my trauma of the background of this song. But anyway, I couldn't help but share that story. Here we go. I am Iron Man. Right? That's all I can think of. All right, so this big long instrumental break, and then we're gonna go into the song. Now, now I remember this not being quite as out of tune and kind of like creepy circus 
kind of stuff. But listen to the vocalist. Check it out. Has he lost his mind? Can he see or is he blind? Can he walk at all? Or if he moves, will he fall? <laughs> right? So, you know, again, you're seven, you're waking up. By the way, in fairness, I have to say something for you. You're going, oh, your brother was really mean. He was. He was just, you know, what was I? So if I was seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, he was 13, right? At the time, 12, 13, uh, 13, maybe almost 14. And, uh, but he's also the same brother that turned me on to the band Yes and stuff. And I remember that's when I tattooed that on my arm also at the, uh, at the same time when I was seven years old, I tattooed this on my arm uh, because Yes songs, if you can look at it really closely, I tried to get it close to the Yes song album and stuff. And um, so he turned me on to really great music. By the way, that was also a trip. When you're singing Roundabout, right? Well, when you're that seven in the morning, you're a kid, you're laying in your bed and you hear that stereo, you're like, oh, Rich, oh, gosh, get out of your bed. And then you go down and you listen to Yes, right? Anyway, so there was good and bad. It helped me, uh, you know, he turned me on a lot of great music when I was young. This is one of those great music times. Don't get me started about Dead on Arrival. If you guys know that song, that's a real killer. Wah, wah. Anyway, <laughs> I got a million of them today. Sorry, I'm in rare form today. No, I didn't take anything or do anything weird. I'm, this is a natural high for me. Let's move on. Here we go. So um, now, <laughs> is he dead or alive? Can he see? Is he blind? Whatever. Is he alive or dead? Has he thought within his head? Will John Right, so I mean, this is really creepy stuff. It's not even really music, it's just scare stuff, right? All right, here we go. He was turned to steel in the great magnetic field when he traveled time for the future of mankind. By the way, I'll bet you didn't know that was what this song was about. All you guys, all these years, been listening to Iron Man, I bet you had no idea that that was a backstory on this. Here we go. Nobody wants him. He just is at the wall. Right, nobody wants him. They're making fun of him. Here we go. Planning his vengeance. Planning his vengeance. That he will soon fall. Okay, all right, let's continue. Here we go. Now the time is here for a man to spread fear. Vengeance from the grave. Kill the people that he once saved. Now I want you to think of Ozzy. Think about this. He hasn't changed much, <laughs> right? Ouch. No, but he hasn't. And so, you know, has he lost his mind? Can he see or is he blind? Right? It, it, it's, it's Ozzy, right? And, and all these years later, I don't care if it's Crazy Train or whatever it is, you're, you know, you're an Ozzy fan. Um, he has got he got a lot more melodic in his songwriting and got really good in some of the lyric stuff though I know Bob Daly helped on that on some of those songs but um, but you know it's really interesting because you see the metamorphosis of Ozzy in Black Sabbath you know and let's remember my gosh you know I mean you had guys like Dio coming in and sing for Sabbath you had Ray Gillen one of my all time favorite singers he did, left us way too early phenomenal vocalist also was in Bla Black Sabbath been also Badlands uh, but anyway so Black Sabbath turned out some great stuff this is the Deep Purple era let's not forget the, the the quality music that was going on at the time but anyway uh, so it's just very odd awesome. nobody wants him that multi-track they just turn their heads you know alistair crowley all that creepy you know d devil stuff right nobody helps him now he has his revenge See, nobody wants him now he has his revenge, right? So he's kind of, nobody wants him, now he has his revenge. So you just gotta have like a little bit of a British accent, don't use any vibrato, slur through your words, sing in the face, and you know, you're, you're gonna get, start heading towards the, uh, the Aussie world of singing. I think that might be it, because I don't think there's, oh yeah, that's right, the end break. And then these massive solos that happen in the middle, which we're not gonna play, but. Heavy boots of lead, fills his victims full of dread. Running as fast as they can, Iron Man lives again. 
I had no idea that's what that did in the end. But isn't it kind of interesting? I mean, you don't really think it was a pretty good songwriting. It might have even been for a movie, I forget. Someone help me out because I know Marvel has Iron Man, I think, or someone else, something like that. But listen to it with the track now because it really makes creepy sense. But the vocal fits really cool in the track. Check it out. And they give you that, you know. Let's be honest, guys, you guys out there playing guitar. Didn't you learn this on guitar? I know I did. It was one of the very first things that, and then, you, um, <laughs> and then you migrate to Stairway to Heaven, right? And then you get kicked out of the music store for doing it. But anyway, you know, we had Smoke on the Water, eh, 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 and then you bound down, right? You had those epic, epic guitar lines, right? And you move on to the next one, you go. And the epic Tony Iommi guitar solo stuff. Anyway, gang, hopefully you enjoy this as much as I do, and I'm just kind of sharing some family, some family drama and history with you guys. Uh, but let me share a little bit more with you, and check out my next video.